if someone is reading this report and wondering what to do next, and this is my favorite part in conversation with you, what would you recommend as a starting point to them? Yeah, I, any any threat intelligence that doesn't isn't actionable, I, I really have no use for. So that's a great question. So bottom line is, I want to understand the attacker's behavior at the destination level and how it enables you know, my proactive and tailored countermeasures. Um, so, so going back, I want to understand where I'm in the framework, how I can react. Um, and then it, it, it reminds me some of the basics. So as I come back to this and, and FSI SAC has a great cyber fundamentals page. Um, Akamai has some great blogs on how to work with your, uh, DDoS provider to optimize your capabilities. And so the first is, you know, make sure your governance and continuous assessment uh, for your vendors is doing well, because most people use a third-party vendor. Next is your tech options. You know, if if you're doing it yourself, are you doing GOIP filtering, dynamic traffic shaping, whitelisting, and and there are a number of technical recommendations in the report. Um, if you belong to a group, an ISAC or a threat intelligence sharing group, make sure you're actively working with them. Make sure you understand the trends. And what I feel is most important is what's working for other companies? What best practices are they doing? What lessons learned did they go through having survived one of these major attacks and leverage all that? Um, and then, you know, don't forget the basics. Validate your playbooks or your processes. Have exercises. Do health checks with your vendors. Make sure you know where you are. Uh, review your capabilities annually, you know. What is the new trend? Now it's volume. What's the highest level volume attacks we've seen this year? Can I handle that volume? And then finally, remember to take credit. Go and brief your leadership. You know, if you blocked a DDoS attack and it had no impact, you know, sometimes we're like, okay, that wasn't an event. Well, I think it is. Go brief your leadership. You know, we have had five DDoS attacks this year and we successfully blocked all of those with no impacts to our customers. That way you're giving them feedback on their, you know, basically a return on their investment uh, understanding. That's a very important point because one of the big challenges for security is visibility, not just into threats, but into the work that they have done to stop them. How do you make sure that the rest of the organization actually understands the value of what you have prevented especially when things are quiet and the leadership starts asking, why do you need this if we haven't been attacked in two years? You know, I think that is a constant balance. And that's why I said, you know, it it is dangerous not to take credit for what you've done. And so, you know, if, if you go in and you say, uh, we patched 70 machines this month. Well, that's not a risk statement. That's a task you completed. If you go in and you say, there were two new zero days that came out this month and we were able to patch within a week so we had no impact for these new zero days in the wild, that's a risk assessment that the board's going to say, okay, I see how you protected us. I'm, I'm happy I invested in you. And so I think it is understanding the board's role and your leadership's role and even, you know, your your CTO, your CFO, your head of operations, all of those people are looking for you to minimize the friction and maximize the return on security investment. And so you need to speak on those terms of, you know, this is what we were able to do. Now, every year we're going to be like, oh, we need to grow our budget by, you know, 10% because of this or that, or I, I need this new capability. Right now, so many people have APIs coming out. Well, that's a new technology and it requires a different level of security. The top 10, you know, for web pages, the top 10 OWASP attack for web pages are not the same top 10 for APIs, which are not the top 10 for large language models. So as we have new technologies, we in security need new capabilities to help protect those. And that's part of that ongoing journey discussion of you're transforming, 
you got a new budget. We need a, a parallel budget to ensure you're continued to be pro- protected. So that's kind of a, a bit of a rambling answer, but hopefully that was helpful.